Greetings, gardeners. Aloha. Well, back to the uh, Lava and Garden Show today. Fifteen minutes of flame with the Green Garden guy. <laughs> oh, there have been some changes. Uh, we're going to have to redraw the map of the, the island of Hawaii. The whole shoreline out near Kapoho is now completely altered beyond recognition. Um, the way things go, currently the, what was Kapoho Bay up here is now becoming another bay way to the south, uh, it looks like, from the flows. So we may end up with no net loss of bays on this side once it's all over. But who knows? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That's the amazing thing about living on a volcanic island, and it actually reflects everything that happens in this universe. If you thought that life in the universe was predictable, guess again, no one knows. And, uh, yeah, so the, the whole shoreline has now been altered. I don't even recognize it on the map. I have to throw out all the old maps I have of the island. Even your Google Maps are probably not quite up to date because this stuff is coming out of Fisher number 8, if I, if I remember it correct, because I haven't got a note on this, um, that it was, I believe they said 26,000 gallons a second. Wow! Is that a lot of flow? Also, every time I tune into pictures on the news, uh, of the fissure, originally it was a crack in the earth. Every day it starts looking more and more and more like a volcano. And then our famous volcano behind me up here in the park, uh, Heli Mau Mau in Kilauea, it's collapsing and it's just turning into a big hole in the ground. And so, we don't know, but uh, the, the whole thing up there is shutting down. Up in the park, uh, the uh, uh, Jagger Museum has been endangered. It's getting cracks in it. Everything's getting covered in white ash. It looks like snow. Um, but Highway 11, which is a major route from one side of the island to the other and passes right through the National Park. Last time I was up there uh, filming eruptions, it was, uh, there were cracks in the road, but it was drivable. Now the images I see are showing the stuff is actually sticking up in the air. The road's been folded. There's pieces a lot of uh, asphalt that look like they might be 6 to 12 inches up. They, they take a front suspension right off if you hit them. They're going to have to do some emergency road repairs uh, going through the park. Everything is changing. It's a dynamic situation. It's all changing. We're seeing some very unusual uh, bubbling in the ocean off Kapoho that uh, has been described as lava that's actually coming up through the sea floor uh, underneath the ocean and it's boiling the water. I know one of the geologists was asked by a news reporter what this was going to mean for people with boats. He says, I don't know, I'm a geologist. That's a maritime issue. I tell you, there are some lava tours that have been allowed to go in there and watch this. Uh, I don't think I'm interested in joining the fun because <laughs> it ain't like hell to suddenly be out there and have the ocean boiling around the boat. It does not sound like fun. So it's quite a spectacle. The SO2 damage, or sulfur dioxide damage, to the plant material down in Lower Puna just continues and continues. Sequential shots of what was green in April and is now just brown and crunchy by June. Things are just dying off wholesale, even if they haven't been burned, if no, the lava hasn't hit them, you know. The gas just passing through is wiping all this stuff out. Uh, we're still seeing the nightly display from here at the house. Pretty much the same every night. We are getting used to it though. It's very much like a private sunset. Uh, you know, it's just like out there in the southeastern sky. Sky glows red. Uh, I don't know what we'll do uh, for an amusement once that finally ceases. Well, so much for the volcano. The typical dynamic ongoing situation. Instead, I'd like to go into the garden today. And I am feeling a little better. Yeah, I'm feeling better. Here, look, see this thing? That's the cane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, ooh, yeah. Right, no, not quite. It still hurts and I'm still hobbling, but it is improving. I'd like to talk just a little bit about garden ornamentation. With the SO2 and the plants dying, you know, who wants another plant? Let's talk about something that doesn't die. 
I remember when I ran nursery in California and people would come to me with a southwestern corner of a house where the heat would build up in summer and everything they put in there just drops dead, you know, and it's not quite enough light maybe for cactus to grow. And they don't want cactus anyway. And so they say, Bill, what should I put here? I go, well, you might consider a rock. They go, huh? Well, maybe a bird bath, you know? Try an inanimate object. Oftentimes we forget when we're gardening, you know, everything's so much about plants and soil and so on, we kind of forget sometimes that inanimate objects are really, really nice in a garden. I mean, you know, traditional uh, Japanese gardens, for instance, have their stone lanterns and tetsubaki and different forms of, uh, of sculpture that are seen, the classic pieces, they look really good, too, in any sort of a garden. Um, there's other things I, I recall... Um, one of my clients in California, and actually uh, she was one of the first people that I started doing designs and, and landscaping for when I started that business. The lady's name is Barbara Schlein. And uh, I did a design for Barbara. Uh, in fact, if you look at the Green Garden Guy channel and right across the top of my channel you see all these pretty flowers, that was Barbara's garden. Uh, it was a design that I did in her front yard. When you start to take out a lawn and you go ahead and you put in all these perennials and succulents and stuff, suddenly you can't just walk through the garden. Not like you can with a lawn where you can traffic on it. And so you have to create paths. You need flow areas and ordinarily divide things into quadrants and whatnot and then run paths between them. And so I had designed paths into Barbara's garden and I said, well, you know, in the design here I put these down as just 12-inch circular concrete stepping stones, but we can use almost anything, Barbara. Well, Barbara was doing a mosaic class at a point. She uh, was a retired art teacher, and she's taking a class and doing mosaics, and I suggested, well, you know, maybe you do something with the step stones. So Barbara went ahead and she went to town and started making mosaic step stones that we ran through the garden that, I mean, really enhanced the work that I did. It was a beautiful partnership there. Um, later on, while doing designs in the backyard, there was a lot of blank wall space on the house and blank areas on the fences. And in some of the fence areas, we did put up vertical living succulent gardens. Um, all of this is actually on my YouTube channel. It was all videoed years ago, and if you're interested, you can go back in there and look at it. But she started doing uh, murals, mosaic murals that she could hang, like a picture, uh, on the walls of the house outside and on the fences and stuff. And uh, some gorgeous stuff, really beautiful. Uh, it enhanced the garden so much. I liked it so much that over the years I told Barbara, geez, I'd like to have some of that stuff for my garden, you know, and so every now and then Barbara would create a piece and, uh, and she would uh, give it to me. She never once charged me for these things. I keep asking her for signatures because I think she's going to be Grandma Moses someday and if my stuff is signed it might be worth something, uh, even if it isn't, it's beautiful and I, I, I love her work. <laughs> Recently, though, she she sent me a photograph of uh, of a brand new uh, sculpture that she'd done, and uh, basically it was a mosaic salmon. But uh, Barbara's brother Hugh, who's a man who I know well, has done my website. My website is Hugh's work, and Hugh used to work with me sometimes doing hard features in gardens, uh, and. Uh, Hugh looked at the salmon and said, oh, it's chicken of the sea. Well, Barbara sent me the picture and said, it's chicken of the sea. I said, Barbara, that's a salmon. Uh, chicken of the sea is a tuna, you know. And uh, that was well round and round and round. And then eventually I, I had expressed an interest because I, I have a fish collection here. Uh, it's small, but I do have a collection of, of fish sculptures around. And uh, so... A couple days ago, I got a cryptic email about flying fish in Hawaii from uh, from Hugh, Barbara's brother. And I went, Hugh, I don't understand. What are you talking about? You know, he says, oh, you'll see. And then finally today I get another one that I should check the post office. So I went down to the post office. And when I opened up my post office box, this is what I found. It's the Chicken of the Sea by Barbara Schlein. And in fact, Barbara signed this one for me. 
Isn't it gorgeous? I just love this. <laughs> it's a salmon, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful salmon. It's on a wood backing, and there it's cut out and then routed out, and she put the ceramic and glass beads inside the salmon. I think it's just gorgeous. Chicken of the sea, and he has his own feet right down here, some chicken feet that he stands on. Well, not a fish at all. This one happens to be a whale, so it's a mammal, but I call it my... Uh, seismic whale earthquake detector because every time the house shakes he tends to tip one way or the other and I can tell whether we had a rattle. He uh, guards our hats and umbrellas out here in the carport. Right here we have a uh, tuna plaque that was given to me by my brother and my sister-in-law and he's in matching coordinating colors with a fish table that sits here between our chairs for holding our drinks. Chicken of the Sea, at least for now, looks pretty good sitting there. It's right there, that's a rock cod sculpture. But this one over here is one of my pride and joy. These are my koi fish, Roy and Charlie. They were done by Barbara many years ago in memoriam of our fishes. And uh, I, I think it's just a beautiful plaque. It's a match with a toad planter that Barbara did for me. Uh, for many, many years, I worked with a rock and roll trio called the Dead Toad, and so I have this toad fascination. And so Barbara did a toad pot for us. But it sure looks great with the chicken of the sea over there. So, folks, there you have it. The Lava and Garden Show for the day. Thanks a lot for watching. Aloha and... Don't forget to let your salmons hang loose. <laughs>